Hello, I'm Jonathan Hughes. I'm General Manager for the National Trust in Pembrokeshire and this is Freshwater West. For many people, Freshwater West is best known as Wales's premier surfing beach. It's also really popular with uh, local families and dog walkers and recently was the site of a Harry Potter film and Russell Crowe's Robin Hood and since then it's increased in popularity year on year. The land at Freshwater West came to the National Trust in the 1970s from the Cordra estate uh, and it's heavily designated for its nature conservation value, it's a special protection area for the chuff and it's a special area of conservation for its coastal flora and fauna. One of the most important features of Freshwater West are the dune lands and the dune system and then inland they migrate into a, a fascinating wetland known locally as Castle Martin Course with its fen meadows and at the heart of Freshwater West is Gupton Farm which is a 400 acre working farm. Freshwater West, although it looks calm and tranquil on a day like today, is actually at the forefront of changing landscapes. It's having to accommodate society's demands on land and their expectations, as well as adapt to climate change and sea level rise. So come with me and let's go and have a look at the sand dunes. One of the opportunities that Freshwater West presents us is the chance to broaden and widen the coastal belt. At the moment, with the pressure from the sea and the pressure from farming, the, the coastal conservation was beginning to get a bit squeezed. I'm looking across in front of me now at the sand dunes that we were looking down upon from the vantage point. Uh, and you can see that really they're quite restricted and in order for habitats and ecosystems to work at a large scale, they need to be bigger, better and more joined up. And the fields that you're looking at behind me offer that opportunity. Uh, two years ago they were in an arable production and now we're accommodating a reversion to dune grassland and over the next 20 years they will become like pure sand dunes and, and they will add robustness and resilience to the existing sand dunes at Freshwater West. I'm standing here on Freshwater West Beach. Um, it's a nice high tide and the pile of rocks that I'm standing on demark where the Castle Martin course used to run out onto the beach. And the dilemma that we face here, as you can see, is that at high tide, actually, the water can't run freely out. And as the sea level rises increase incrementally over the coming decades, the water in the Castle Martin course will get backed up increasingly. And every now and then, when there's a big storm, as there was earlier in this year, the road actually becomes uh, under a little bit of threat. And so the long-term viability of this whole beach uh, is, is going to be put under increasing pressure in the coming years. We're here now right in the heart of Gupton Farm in the low-lying basin known as Castle Martin Course. It was drained in the 1800s by the Corders. You've got a rich mosaic of fen meadow, reed bed, open ditches and, and a gradation from very, very wet land yeah, up to the sandier dunes on the slopes. The Fen Meadow here is a site of special scientific interest and the National Trust works incredibly closely with Natural Resources Wales to ensure we get exactly the right management uh, for this really rare habitat. And, and the reason it's so rare is, is where this soil structure exists elsewhere in Britain it's almost always farmed with uh, you know, carrots or parsnips, particularly over in East Anglia. So the fact that here it's left more natural and grazed in conjunction with the farm um, means that it's particularly rare and special. One of the real challenges here is how do we adapt this habitat to inevitable climate change? Uh, and what we're working towards doing is increasing the area uh, and moving it from this discrete unit and broaden it to, to adjoining fields to make this habitat survive into the future. One of the important micro habitats of this wetland system are actually the ditches themselves, the original drainage ditches. So some of the species that are rarest down here need a bit of open water. So we're undertaking in conjunction with NRW 
a rotational management of some of the ditches to ensure we've got the best variety of habitats. At the moment, we've had a particularly dry summer and so the ditches themselves uh, don't have the open water that they normally would. But in, in the winter time, all these ditches are flooded and full uh, and the, 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 the experience is a very different one. It's a very different place in winter. But this is not just a nature reserve. Critical to the success of the management of this place is working with the farmers and Chris James here is working closely with the National Trust and Natural Resources Wales to get the management right. I've worked very closely with National Resources Wales and we've developed a grazing policy on this block of land. We tend to mob stock it through a very short growing season which is probably April to October and at the right times we put maybe a hundred cattle into each section here and initially the cattle move into the area and they graze these lush sweet grasses at the top but when they've grazed through these and there's nothing growing back then they slowly work down the gradient and they then graze the coarser rougher grasses associated with the with the fenland and in so doing they're breaking through the rush they're creating open spaces um, areas where the light can get right down to, to the base of the vegetation and encourage the plant that the National Trust and the National Resources Wales want. If you come back here in, in the winter, it's full of wading birds and mi migratory birds and it really is teeming with wildlife. This is a field that was previously full of cooch grass and we've decided to plough it and reseed it with the traditional hay type meadow. We've put in a um, traditional hay mix, fescues of, of red clover, um, tall fescue, white clover, chicories, sheep's burnet and we wanted to have something here that was productive and yet it wouldn't be your typical modern pasture lays which require high nitrate levels. This field is, is um, virtually pure sand. If, if you take a sample of the soil it's got very little organic matter in it it runs through your fingers. So we've decided to choose a mix that's suitable um, for this particular environment. It's, it's got plants that are all deep rooted and they can draw the moisture from a greater depth and roots that go down perhaps three or four feet. It's also having a light roll now and we're going to have to put a thin layer of muck on the surface and this will have to cap the surface because the risk is that if we were to have an autumn storm that this sand would just blow away. Once it's established hopefully it will form a mat on the surface and it will be able to capture some more of the moisture and the nutrients from the soil. In this field we grew a crop of spring barley and rather than combine it we've actually harvested it into these wrapped bales and that will provide feed for our cattle in the winter. After we grew the barley we drilled this crop of rape and stubble turnips and the cows can graze this in conjunction with eating these bales from ring feeders in the winter. That's great for me as a farmer because it gives a good mixed diet but also it's great for the wintering birds as well because it, it provides a high starch feed for those birds in the winter. These are my herds of Frisian heifers. They will be calving next spring, um, having their first calf. And they're grazing this dune reversion area and they're grazing out quite cleanly so that the sunlight can get to the bottom of the pasture and we can graze out some of the weeds and allow the dune reversion process to take place. This is Freshwater West looking at its sublime gorgeous best um, and it's a fantastic beautiful place in the summer but if we come back here in the winter it's a very different beast. Hopefully what you've seen today is how the National Trust work with the farming community um, and the Natural Resources Wales to manage change. It's to anticipate environmental change and accommodate and make habitats bigger, better and fit for the future.